All right, guys, welcome back to the Web Security Academy Lab Walkthroughs video series. Um, today we'll be tackling the Blind SQL Injection with Conditional Errors Lab. If you've not done the first Blind SQL Injection Lab, uh, I would say pause this one, go ahead and go back and watch that one because this lab uh, directly builds off of the last one and it uses uh, the uh, principles from the last video uh, in this one. Uh, the only difference this time, however, is that we uh, saw there was a difference in the page um, last time. It checked a tracking ID and then right up uh, here by the home and my account sign, we saw that there was a string that tra checked your tracking ID and if it was a valid tracking ID, it would say welcome back. However, um, this time we're going to be tackling the lab. Um, there is no uh, output on the page that's going to give us any indication whether it's a valid tracking ID or not. The SQL injection is still going to be in the tracking ID. Um, it's just not going to give us any type of uh, visual feedback on the page. So one thing that we can do to get around that is to intentionally trigger SQL errors, uh, like SQL syntax errors, uh, mathematical errors. We can intentionally cause some type of error with our injected SQL query to um, give us some type of feedback that we can use to then uh, build upon and uh, get a meaningful output from the uh, database on the back end. All right, so now that we have the lab loaded up, um, we can go ahead and start taking a stab at the SQL injection. So one thing that we know, um, we, the, the lab is operating under a few assumptions, uh, and we know that there is going to be a user called administrator. Uh, we know that there's a table called users, and we also know that this is going to be an Oracle database. Um, so those are a couple nuances to keep in mind as we walk through this. Um, but to get started here, um, we can go ahead uh, and make sure our intercept is turned on. We will refresh the home page to grab a fresh tracking ID. Um, we'll send that to repeater with command R, control R if you're on Windows, and we will turn the intercept off. Now we can come back over into the repeater uh, and set up our SQL injection. So just like last time, we are going to add a single quotation to start um, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to use a double pipe to concatenate um, and then we are going to open some parentheses and then we're going to type select and then we're going to use case, the word case. So this is almost like a switch statement if you're uh, familiar with programming or like an if. Um, so we're going to select case when. So when we need for this when condition, this, uh, this accepts a condition, we need to give it some type of condition. So we're going to give it 1 equals 1, which is our always true condition. So select case one, when 1 equals 1. So for this injection, we are going to be executing our case. So we're going to use then, which uh, our, condition, or our actual uh, item that we want executed follows this then statement. And then we're going to use two underscore char and the to char function uh, is going to take a um, take a parameter here and we're going to do one divided by zero um, close the parameter uh, for the to char function then we're going to do else um, double quote double single quotation mark and then end that ends our uh, that ends our case statement so this is going to be case when one equals one if one equals one, which it always will, then we're going to perform this one divided by zero function. Um, if one divided by, or if one equals one um, is not the case, which you don't really have to worry about. This is just a syntactic thing. Um, we just execute else with essentially nothing there is what you can think about. And then end is going to be the end of this case statement. So you can think of this as all as kind of one thing or like there's a uh, imaginary parentheses surrounding that. But we still need to select from a table. So we're going to do select or we're going to do from because we're still selecting from something uh, and it needs to be dual because it's an uh, Oracle database. So then we will close parentheses and add two pipe characters to concatenate and make sure that we have a closing 
single parentheses for our first open single parentheses. And there's not actually supposed to be a space here. So what we're doing um, on this first, uh, first injection here, as I kind of said, we're intentionally executing um, with this one equals one here, we're intentionally executing a divided by zero error. And what we want to try to get is an error, because if there is an error, that means that we successfully injected this statement, um, because otherwise we won't be able to elicit any type of behavior out of the page or see any difference in the page uh, to know whether this is uh, vulnerable to SQL injection or not. So what we can go ahead and do is send this through, and you'll see we get a 500 error. So that's good. We're looking to cause an error. Um, conversely, if we change this one to one equals two, so now you can think of this case as executing the divide by zero when one equals two, which one will never equal two. So we're never going to execute this divide by zero. So what we will execute is this else statement, which is nothing. It's just empty quotation marks. And then we're going to select from dual. So this is a valid statement. So it should not cause an error because we're not intentionally causing an error. And boom, look at that. We have an OK request. So now you can kind of see um, how we're going to conditionally cause errors um, to get what we want. And every time there is an error, that means it's a valid hit for this lab. OK, so now that we have uh, the basics of this lab understood, let's go ahead and send um, this request over to the intruder with uh, command I, control I if you're on Windows. So we'll go over to intruder. And let's, uh, let's start setting up our injection here. Um, we want to start figuring out how long that password is again. So we'll clear this um, and get rid of our SQL injection currently. So we're going to leave that first opening quotation mark, except for this time, what we want to do is we're going to use that double pipe, open parentheses, select, and then we want to do case when. Uh, we're going to use the length function again. Um, you can kind of see if you remember from the last uh, lab what we're doing here. We're going to open parentheses and pass the password column in uh, as the parameter to the length function. So we're looking at the or we're looking at the length of the password, uh, and then we're going to say select the case when the length of the password is greater than one, and if it is, then we're going to execute. Uh, we're going to use the two char function, so underscore two char. Um, open parentheses, cause an error. So we're going to execute the divide by zero error, else don't do anything. So we're going to use that null and then end. So this is what we're doing right now. I'll just stop for one second to show you. So we're going to use this case function or case uh, control method to execute um, the divide by zero error when the length of the password is greater than one. Uh, and then we're going to go greater than two, greater than three. You can kind of see uh, we're going to use my method to enumerate what this pass, how long this password is. However, we still need to select from a table. So we're going to select from the user's table that they tell us exists. And then we're going to say where the username, because that they told us that there's a username column, where the username is equal to administrator because they also told us that there is an administrator user. So we'll close the quotations for administrator, close the open parentheses, so those are all together. Uh, do double pipes for the concatenation operator and then make sure it's all closed with another single quotation mark. So this is almost ready to go. Uh, we had their payload selected. Um, except for, and we cleared it. Now we need to create our own. So we're going to highlight this one next to the password and we're going to add. Um, so now we have those weird squiggly S's around the one indicating that this is our password or this is our payload. Um, and we want to make sure that the attack type is set to sniper. So we'll go over to the payloads tab right next to the positions tab. Uh, we're going to come down and we're going to do numbers. Uh, we want to go from one to let's just say 30 again to be safe uh, and then we will step by one and that's all set in this payload options want to go over this should all just be set to normal those are the only two things that we need to set and then we can go ahead and start this attack
this will take you know uh, a couple seconds if you're on the community version if not um, you, if you're on the pro version it'll only, only take a couple seconds just like you saw here so what we're looking at now is we want to look at where there is a 500 status error or a 500 status response because that means that there was an error and that was a valid password length so it looks like the password length is valid all the way up until 20 except for it starts on index 0 so it looks like the password is going to be 20 characters long once again okay so now let's go ahead and tackle this last part of the lab and we know that the password is now 20 characters long um, all we need to do now is iterate over all 20 of those characters and find out exactly uh, which character is in each position um, through those uh, through those 20 positions so Let's go ahead, come back, get rid of our SQL injection again. Let's start building out uh, an injection payload that is going to extract those characters. Um, and we're going to do this my method like we did last time. So we're going to automate this instead of doing this by hand because uh, doing this 20 times can get uh, <laughs> can make this a little bit longer than it needs to be. So what we'll do is we'll do a double pipe um, and then we're going to do select case when oh, yep, when <laughs> and then we're going to use this substring method so that's s-u-b-t-s-t-r um, and then we're going to pass the password parameter and then one comma one comma one end and then we're going to do equals the letter a the letter a is going to be in single quotation marks and then we're going to use then we're going to do the two char method or two char function. I guess you can call it either or. Uh, we're going to pass it the divide by zero error, so you can see exactly what's happening there. And then we're going to say else, do nothing. We're going to end that statement. So let's just backtrack really quick before this gets longer um, and see what's happening. So right now we're selecting. You can think of the select um, as going to choose which one of these based on the evaluation. Um, the, we're selecting from the case when, so uh, if the password um, in the first position is A, then we will cause an error. We'll divide by zero. If it's not A, then we will do nothing, which means it's not a hit. So we're looking once again for an error. Um, and if you followed my last video, you'll see that we will automate this character in this character so it'll iterate over automatically and we can see um, right where the errors are at and what index each um, each character is so after the end um, we want to select from a table still so we're going to select from the table users and then we're going to narrow the search again with the where clause and that is going to be where username oops username <laughs> if I could spell <laughs> username is equal to administrator close that with a single quotation mark close our open parentheses uh, close that concatenation operator and then also close our SQL injection with another single um, quotation mark so um, you guys kind of saw what was happening we want to select two payloads now so I already told you what they are um, this one it, we want to highlight the a where the password is at because that is going to be our character list and then we also want to select this one so it's password comma the first one is the one that we want selected you're gonna highlight it and click add so the a and the one should have these weird uh, squiggly S's by them those are gonna be our two payloads then we want to come up to attack type and hit cluster bomb so cluster bomb means that there's two payloads we will come over to payloads um, and the first one, which is this one, because it reads them left to, le left to right, is going to be numbers once again. So, or yes, it's going to be numbers once again. We can change this now to 20 um, because we know that that is this is the length of the password and the password's 20 characters long. Let's go ahead, change that to 20. Um, and then we can go over to the second payload which is going to be a simple list. Um, we want all the character space. It tells us that the password is all lowercase letters and then numbers zero to nine. So to do that, once again, we'll just do add from list. We'll click lowercase a to z. 
make sure that there's not an empty line, and then come down and hit add from list again. Zero to nine, once again, that should be good. Just make sure there's not a space in the middle there. Um, and we're not grep matching anything in the options tab because there's no output difference. We're gonna be looking at status codes. So now we should be good to go. Um, we can start this attack. I will get back with you guys in one minute because this one will take a few seconds to run, um, especially if you're on community version. So uh, go grab a coffee and uh, come back. Come back in one second. Okay, and we're back here uh, again. We can see that the attack did succeed. Um, I went ahead and sorted these. Uh, you can just do that by double clicking on status and then double clicking on payload one. But status is what we're looking at and we wanna look specifically at the 500s um, because that means that there was an internal server error, which was caused by our divide by zero injection. Um, and that means that it's a valid character. So we see here that there are 20 uh, 500 errors. This was right where it started cutting off. And then the rest of them were just do nothing. And they gave us 200, 200 responses, which were just okays. So we wanna look where the errors were caused. Um, and then we want to go in and enter this uh, password, because this is the password for the administrators, what we extracted, um, character by character, um, all 20. As you can see, uh, the payload one indicates the position of each character in the string of the password. So I have it sorted right now. So this is the first character, second character, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, um, and so forth. So what we can do um, is we'll head back over to my account and we'll enter an administrator and then we'll start entering in this password. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and enter in this password and jump back over to you guys in one second once this is entered because it's gonna take a second. Okay, so the password is entered. Um, we will go ahead and click log in and solve the lab here. So as you guys can see, we've logged in as administrator and solved the lab uh, and automated this in the process. Join back again tomorrow. Uh, we will go through uh, another method of uh, attacking uh, blind SQL injection. All right, thank you guys.